So now that the bar has been appropriately set higher than I would have liked, <laughs> let me see if I can work this. So um, I thought I would take a moment just to introduce Windstream because I'm not sure what the level of familiarity in the group will be. Windstream is a Fortune 500 company that is a telecommunications provider. So it's one of the bad guys that's limiting progress over here. <laughs> Saying. <laughs> Windstream delivers a little over $6 billion in annual revenue, and we provide advanced telecommunication services to enterprise providers or customers, and as well, we offer home phone, internet, and satellite television service to consumer households. So I am here today representing the consumer portion of the business, which is really the foundation of the company and where our roots lie, and is uh, quite honestly, the large cash generating portion of the business that is there to fuel a lot of the investment and growth in the enterprise sector. So we play a very important role in the business and we are a very uh, focused organization that is consistently working to maximize contribution margin. So we are uh, managing a declining revenue stream at a very high margin, which is an interesting place to be because that means our role in the company is to deliver as much cash as possible for other investments, meaning we very rarely see those dollars coming back to our portion of the business. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how can we get very creative in helping to move the whole company forward by being smarter and being a little bit more nimble in the way that we manage our portion of the business. So a couple years ago, we were faced with many challenges, but two specific challenges that we asked our digital team to help us uh, find a creative way to address. The first is that we were experiencing uh, degraded brand perception. And a lot of this is driven by the fact that as internet has grown and as we've become so deeply saturated, Windstream competes against cable providers who quite honestly are able to deliver faster speeds to the home than we are and who don't have the same legacy telco heritage that we live with on a daily basis. And so consumers were very keenly aware of the competitive landscape and viewed Windstream as a little bit of a laggard and, and a telephone company that tried to deliver internet but wasn't as competitive as we should be. Um, and so the reason we asked our digital team to, to take a stab at that is if you are a telecommunications and specifically an internet company, your internet presence should reflect your forward-looking ability to deliver a quality experience. And I felt like we fell short in that particular space. The other thing that was happening is the web was getting a lot of attention at that point in time because we had seen massive year-over-year -year increases in the volume of uh, web-initiated interactions with customers. So specifically, live chat volume had grown 80%, and email inquiries coming into our call center had grown substantially. And this wasn't offset by a decline in live phone calls. So this is truly a growth in volume. And as a entity that is so focused on contribution margin, that's never a good thing because we are protective, obviously, of our expenses, particularly when those expenses are tied to people that we need to run the business. So this was a little bit of a, a complex situation that we wanted to try to think about how do we improve the web experience both to reduce costs and improve brand perception. So I want to talk a little bit about the evaluation process we went through because I think it's incredibly important to understand where, where we were coming from in the process and how then important the end result has been to our company. We've been very conscious about making sure as we go through and evaluate the ways that we run the consumer business that we're consistently aligning the company strategy specific to our space, which is lean staffing, lean processes, optimize contribution margin, with our brand strategy, which is not to be Nordstrom, it is to be a very streamlined provider that is friendly and that meets our consumers' needs and expectations. We want to be empathetic and innovative and creative in the way we think about going to market. And that all has to be aligned then with our customer experience strategy, because the interaction the customer has at every single touch point should absolutely reinforce that brand position and drive the credibility and belief on the part of the consumer. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how do we design interactions that are low cost and support that brand position. 
And we came up with a mantra that drove a lot of our decision making, which is that we are absolutely committed to designing consistent, low cost interactions that are friendly and easy for the consumer. And that became the criteria for evaluating solutions to some of our problems. As it turns out, a virtual assistant turned out to be an excellent way to deliver on a low cost interaction with a great customer perception. Very high perceived value for very minimal investment. So that's what we did, meet Wendy. We partnered with Nuance to deploy a virtual assistant on our web properties and the intent was to bring personality to the site and simplicity. We wanted to make sure that we had a friendly way to interact with customers that really reflected our identity as a company and that was something that our customers could relate to and feel comfortable with because our footprint on the consumer side is primarily rural and we serve a lot of very small communities and we live and operate in those communities. So we wanted to create that feeling that we were close to the customer and very connected. So we deployed Wendy, we created a very nice persona. She's quite lovely, people like her. Um, when we launched her, we took some time to really introduce her on the site and we wanted to find that balance of creating personality and warmth while also being very transparent and clear to the customer that she's a virtual assistant. This is not a real person, <laughs> but this is a technology that we've deployed in an effort to make sure you have 24 seven access to the support that you need on any topic you need. And that was the, the goal. And so we took some time to introduce Wendy and to talk a little bit about the types of questions you could ask Wendy when you need some support instead of picking up the phone as your first point of contact. And most importantly, we deployed Wendy on our mobile device. That was a big part of our uh, mobile or our, our brand and web perception issue is we did not have a good mobile site deployment. And as we looked at the increase in the, the contact volume, particularly in the chat and email space, a disproportionate volume of that increase was coming from the mobile channel. And our site was clunky, it, it was not very uh, easy to navigate online, and it certainly didn't facilitate a seamless transition for support. So we were very pleased to have the opportunity to find a virtual assistant that not only fulfilled the website in a traditional manner, but also extended to the mobile device and even uh, kind of leapfrogged ahead of where we could have been with our own site. So we were very pleased with, uh, with Wendy's deployment. The, the uh, interesting part of the build for me is that there was a tremendous amount of skepticism inside our own company about whether or not a virtual assistant could actually support the customer needs and deflect call volume or mitigate chat volume. And that has to do with the nature of our business. We are a technology company. We have network infrastructure of many flavors that's deployed over many states. And the, the content that we had to work with was both broad and deep. And that complexity felt a little bit overwhelming. And so we partnered on day one with the Nuance team to talk about how do we take this, this beast of <laughs> support knowledge and make it uh, organized and intuitive so that the consumer could access the information they need quickly. And it was easy for us to maintain um, because we are very lean and very small. I have exactly four people dedicated to running all of our web properties in total. I count is about a fraction of maybe half a person. <laughs> So we looked at this and there were at deployment five or six big topics that we knew we needed to dig into and support. And the biggest and medias was probably the, the content around our internet service itself. And we had seven primary topics related to internet and then 118 subtopics underneath that that we felt were mission critical. That if we didn't have that built into the site at deployment, then this would not be a success. And some of the top questions that we get are everything from how do I report a service issue to a very general, my internet isn't working, um, to questions about how I set up my equipment and my wireless connection in my home. And you can imagine why there would be skepticism about our ability to deliver on that experience in a virtual environment because we've traditionally solved for those problems through one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting of the network and the customer experience. But we built all of this in and we deployed that at launch and uh, we're actually very shocked at our ability to successfully address customer needs. And I'll show some of those results in just a moment. The other thing that we thought about is the content is incredibly important in an effort to make sure that we're finding the top customer issues and effectively addressing them 
and mitigating the chat volume, which is the first call or first chat resolution metric. How frequently are we able to find the answer, deliver it, and prevent that next level in, uh, escalation? The other is how do we get enough usage of the tool? And there was some question, again, about would our customer base in an incredibly rural footprint be receptive to virtual technology? Would they be willing to go interact with Wendy instead of picking up the phone or instead of going through a traditional support service base? So we've worked quite a bit on thinking about how do we optimize the interaction on the site? How do we make sure Wendy is prominent but not obtrusive? How do we make sure that she's uh, understood as a support option and presented as the preferred support option, and do we have the confidence to do that? So on the left, you'll see our deployment at launch, which in retrospect is a little embarrassing because it's not very robust. But we turned that on, and then over time, we worked to optimize the placement of Wendy. And once we brought her up into that header and made her a very prominent and immediate part of our support section of the site, we saw an immediate doubling of volume of usage. So now we've got both sides working. We've got enough usage that we feel like we can drive volume and a meaningful reduction in our overall live contacts. And we've got content that's there to support and make sure we're remediating problems. And having both sides of the equation is critical because you don't want to drive volume without resolution. And it doesn't really matter how good your resolution is if only two people use it. So we are constantly working to pull the levers to find a balance between those two and make sure that we're delivering an experience that was meeting both the business objective and the consumer objective. And so the result has been uh, very exciting for us, especially for me in this environment where we took a little bit of a risk and we took a, a technology that was beyond anything we could do internally and deployed it to a customer base that quite honestly uh, we believed might not be ready for it. And right off the bat, in the first year of deployment, we reduced our live chat uh, interactions by 45%, which is substantial when you are a lean organization. That's a, a huge staffing benefit to us. And we've found that there are topics that we absolutely can't resolve in Wendy. There's no way that I can do, at least not with our own systems, a deep troubleshooting of the network elements feeding a customer's home in a virtual assistant. But that's worth paying a live rep to do. If I can use Wendy to give somebody their bill payment options or give them the simple instructions for resetting their modem, then I want to do that as much as possible so that I protect and reserve our live support hours for those topics that really warrant a next level support. And it starts to create a feeling that once you get into that call center, you're talking to an agent that has a level of expertise and importance in addressing your topic that it, it's worth the phone call. And that's an important thing for us to continue to think about and work with. The other important note is the, uh, the first chat resolution rates have been very strong from the beginning. I've been very happy with where we've landed. We've stayed kind of within that high performing agent range since launch. A big part of our ability to start in such a good place is we trialed Windy internally only on a development server for about three months before we actually launched it to a customer. And a lot of that was our own concern about did we have all of the content built in that we needed? Was it functioning properly? Did all of the decision trees follow the right paths and the right logic? And we were building and redesigning the website at the same time, so it was worth waiting and getting it right so that the day we launched it, we had a level of confidence that we had done all we could to get all the content in there for the consumer. And from there, the consumer can tell us what we had missed. And I think that, in, in retrospect, is a best practice that I would recommend to anybody looking to deploy this kind of technology for the first time. Having a good internal UAT program that gives you the opportunity to vet the content pretty thoroughly up front saves a lot of pain on the back end, I would imagine, because the optimizations that we had to do with content post-launch were much more subtle and were much more customer driven. And that's been a really nice surprise or outcome of the project. So the customer reaction has been positive as well. Um, again, worried about how consumers would feel about a virtual assistant on our site. Um, and I think the best commentary we get from the customer is their actual words, and we find a lot of that in Wendy because they talk to her quite often as an individual. 
And so we've gotten a lot of consumers who, who clearly either have forgotten that she's a virtual agent or perhaps didn't know that and never really had to discover it during the interaction. So thank you for your time. I appreciate your help. You've been so kind. Our comments that we get very regularly in Wendy, which always delights me because I feel like then I've delivered on a customer experience in a fashion that was deemed acceptable to the customer. We also get consumers that are very aware that she's a virtual agent and want to test that agent. And so we get a lot of questions on useless knowledge. So what's four plus six? Quick answer. And we've had a lot of fun because Wendy can. If my math is right, that makes 10. Please ask me your question about your Windstream service now. And, and it's been great because the consumer enjoys that. You're awesome. Why, thank you. I'm really glad I could help you out. Now ask me your real question. <laughs> and the point is we want to have fun and we want to have a personality, but we also want to make sure that consumers take this seriously as a support vehicle and that we do get down to there's a reason you're on our site and it's not to have fun with our virtual assistant, so tell us a little bit more. And we found that we can find that good balance of, of business and fun in the interaction and it's, uh, it's been wonderful. We also have a lot of I love yous, will you marry me? <laughs> and again, Wendy has walked that line of if a consumer says I love you or will you marry me, her reaction is I'm not a real person. So all I can do is answer your question, would you like to pose one to me? <laughs> and it's a nice, great way of us being able to lighten up a little bit, find a way of humanizing our company and our brand and reminding consumers that we are there to meet their needs and that we are very in tune to what they're looking for at any given moment in time or how they want to interact with our company. And so I've been very proud of these kinds of results and I'm very excited that we've now overcome the internal skepticism around a consumer's willingness to interact with a virtual agent and are interested in moving forward and accelerating not just the deployment of Wendy further and deeper into our content and our sites, but also looking at cross-channel platforms to enable that kind of an interaction on a broader basis. And I think there's a, a lot of great opportunities for us and the results from this implementation have certainly proved um, that it's worth the time and the investment. To that end, I wanna, I wanna make one pause before I, I kind of wrap up a little bit. We scrap in the consumer business to get dollars to do anything. And we work very hard, as I said, to get creative about our solutions. I wanna emphasize that this was a very low cost solution for us. It was not a huge hurdle to overcome to get the build and deployment executed, and it has proven to pay itself back very easily by mitigating some of the conversations that we were happening manually. And I think we could push even those results further to not just look at the live chat mitigation, but the fact that we're able to drive down handle time when a, a chat with Wendy gets escalated to a live agent because Wendy wasn't able to resolve the issue, the full transcript gets sent with that conversation. So there's no repeating from a customer standpoint my story. The rep already knows what they're dealing with. And so you can quickly move into resolution mode instead of having to start over. And that's a great experience for the customer. And that's a great way of making sure even when we have to use a live agent's time, we're not taking so much of the time that it's really costly to the business. And that's been, that's been a wonderful outcome as well. So in terms of our key learnings in this exercise, um, first I just want to, for anybody who is interested in a virtual agent but is skeptical of the agent's ability to handle their business issue, I have full confidence after this implementation that it is possible because as long as you have the knowledge base, there are partners that are very good at helping you understand how to organize and deploy that knowledge. And we work on a daily basis to optimize our content. What started out as very broad and very deep complex content has multiplied exponentially since then. And I have one half of an FTE devoted to the management of that virtual assistant. So very, very simple to manage and very quick to optimize. And I think that having a good partner in Nuance uh, makes that possible because we have two sets of eyes on the issue. I have a team member that's logging in every day just to look at the stats and understand what the top question drivers are and looking for emerging issues. And Nuance has a team that's also looking at the performance of our agent and identifying issues. And we've been able to build content and deploy content to address almost every problem that a customer has raised in the 
agent that we weren't prepared for or aware of. And that's been really excellent in terms of our ability to quickly grow. Uh, the second is that Wendy, or a virtual assistant, will absolutely reduce live support hours. I have full confidence after this deployment, again, that customers are very receptive to the idea. They love having 24-7 access to support in a way that requires much less effort than going and culling through all of our FAQs and all of our support content. It's still there if you want to do that, but with Wendy so prominent and with her success rates, there's really no need to do that anymore. And we would never as an organization be able to afford staffing on a 24-hour basis or even a seven-day-a-week basis. So having this kind of very friendly interaction available every single day is critical to delivering on our commitment to the customer. Well, we also have learned that testing and optimization is fun. And that's not something I would have said before this deployment because it's work and it's hard. And when you have a very lean team, it's all I can do every day to keep the business running, let alone build in consistent practices around optimization. And this platform has made that so simple for us. We've been able to test the placement of Windy. We've looked at different invocation points. We've looked at proactive versus reactive invocation. We've looked at different ways of, of positioning the content, and it's easy to do. I have a user that can log in and, and do almost all of that, and I have the Nuance team that's recommending things we might want to try or practices that have worked for other providers. And just having that pipeline of stuff to try has been really fun for my team and has given us a greater sense of ownership over the experience and ability to positively affect the customer experience. And that's meaningful to me because our business is hard, and we are in a very difficult position every day. And if I can motivate my team to feel like they have an opportunity to be very progressive and very innovative and very proactive in driving the customer experience, I want to reinforce that every single day. So it's been, it's been a great practice for us and something that we've genuinely enjoyed. And then as demonstrated by my comments, also customers love Wendy. And I just, I feel like it's such a win for us to have the opportunity to deploy something that so equally balances the customer need and the customer expectation with the needs of the business and the brand. And it's very rare to find that moment when you're hitting on both equally. I feel like I'm always making a trade-off and skewing one direction or the other. And to find that kind of balance and to find a solution that can grow with us and can help find that balance in our future is really exciting. And it's something that, that I'm a very strong advocate of now within our own company. And I would strongly encourage anybody else considering to give this a great view and to really understand the opportunities it presents to become a little bit more intimate with your customer in a technologically driven way, um, which is a really nice balance. So that's, those are all the remarks that I have prepared. I'm very willing. Will <laughs> I have no idea how much time I've used, but I'm very willing to answer questions if anybody has any. I have some. Yeah. So, did you build up your knowledge base just by the I'll come up here. Yeah, okay, sure. That way, nobody has to run down with the mic. Ah, so. The knowledge base that you started with, was it essentially uh, chat, uh, captured chat, or uh, what, what all was in there? <laughs> uh, knowledge base is a loose term. Okay. Um, we, as we were rebuilding or redesigning our entire website um, to better reflect ourselves as a technology entity and to create a more dynamic platform, our website in the past was um, not very smart. It didn't have hooks into our systems to enable real-time back and forth. So as we rebuilt and redesigned the website, we actually made a decision actively to take all of our support content and load it into the content management system of the web platform. So our CMS platform houses all of our content data, and then that data is consistent with what is presented in Wendy. Wow, so everyone using WordPress could just do it. <laughs> It's not WordPress, no, it know. is Ektron, just... <laughs> but it's, it, it was a big effort to get yeah. all of that content loaded and migrated into a single platform, and um, having a platform that is then the, the actual web interface itself mm -hmm. and driving that interface has made it a lot more dynamic and, and easy for us to manage, 
and I have content owners that are responsible for that. And then you, oh, there's, don't let me preempt over here. There's two. Yes. I know, Sarah, you and I have talked about this, and uh, uh, it looks like you had a good relationship with a vendor. You guys did your part. They did their part. Mm -hmm. Anything you can share with us in terms of challenges that people like me are going got to go through like, to yes. watch out for and, and any advice that would help us through this process? Sure. Um, I will say that the, the entire build process was time-consuming. I think that's a good way to put it. It was well managed, it, there were very clear milestones and expectations and the Nuance team held us very accountable to those. But since I have such a small team, it was incredibly time consuming to really make sure that all of the, the support content was appropriately included and that we were validating that all of the architecture was appropriate. So it, it wasn't that it was hard, it was just time consuming. Um, and so I think that that's something to be aware of. This is not something that you're going to flip on overnight, nor is it something that, that the vendor can manage completely independent of your own resources. Um, to that end, also, it was really important for my team to have the ability to dynamically own content changes going forward, which the platform enables. But the training on how to do that was also something that we needed to be prepared to dedicate time to and really thinking about within our group who has that responsibility and how do we structure ourselves to make sure we don't just launch it and leave it, but that we are actively managing the content within Wendy on an ongoing basis. And when you only have four people, that's hard. <laughs> so I would, I would say going in, just be cognizant of the amount of effort required to make sure that you get to launch and that you have a, a sense of what resource will own and manage that on a go forward basis. Everything since then has been very downhill. Only other comment I'll add is, as much as you think, and I think a couple speakers have said this today, as much as you think you know all of the content you need to have in it, and you've anticipated every possible scenario, you will not. <laughs> that will not happen on day one. And it's not even about, you might get through a little bit of a hurdle and, and feel like you've addressed the bulk of it, but the consumer landscape is very dynamic, and there are things that emerge regularly that we see in Wendy before I even know about it in the business. And so being on top of that and managing that is, is something that you should be thoughtful about because it's a great way if you can use this not just as a tool to support your customer, but also a learning tool to then inform other parts of the organization and set some flags for your other contact centers is a great way to think about it as well. So, so would you say Wendy could learn? Yes, Wendy's okay. smart. Okay. <laughs> no, Wendy uh, learns a lot. I mean, it's yeah. amazing the stuff that we see pop up in Wendy in terms of we're getting this question asked over and over, and we, we don't even know that there is an issue. We've yeah. had uh, long-distance platforms, for example, that, that have had intermittent outages that we weren't aware of until a bunch of questions came in through Wendy that we had issues with long-distance connecting. It's not a typical question that we see in volume yeah. in that tool, so it was a nice way to kind of identify and flag that. And then programmatically, uh, did you look at success rates for Wendy and failure rates and refine her answers based on that? Yes. Okay. We've made a ton of changes to our content and really great changes because there may be four different answers to the question. I don't know what the best answer is from a customer perspective. So I've actually, we've, we've done some proactive testing of content to see what resonates. And we've, for the first time, really built a lot more um, rich media into our support content. So we have more videos, especially we found that when customers were trying to install their uh, wireless network in their home, you really <laughs> need pictures to show this is the modem and this is where this connects and this is how you route it back. And here's optimum placement in the household to make sure your signal strength is, su is sufficient. And that's a lot of deep content that's very hard to, to give verbally and to give in a string. So finding that we could point and direct customers to quick videos mm -hmm. and to uh, more visual content has dramatically improved. It's not that it couldn't resolve the problem earlier, but customers kind of lost interest. That I don't want to read a novel about how to set up my wireless network. So we found that there, there are things you can do in terms of finding a new way to present the content that improves the customer's appetite for using it and absolutely mitigates that next level contact. One more. 
Mike is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go, go ahead, you start. <laughs> so obviously, you know, you mentioned cost of factor and trying to do this on a budget, but you also said you were in the process of overhauling your website, so there's an mm -hmm. expense there, mm -hmm. and yet you decided to integrate a virtual agent at the same time. How did that decision come about, and <laughs> what were like, and how did you go about, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting that budget and, and, and yes. all that? Yes, that was a that was an overwhelming exercise. I must admit that that was a very tense year uh, mm. for for my team. I think that the website overhaul was very easy to make the case that we needed a more dynamic web platform because we had a lot. We we did not have real time um, kind of data dipping. So there are a lot of factors affecting an order in our business, including do you live in a home that's serviced by Windstream? What technology feeds that home? And therefore, what speed internet can you get and what product set is available to you? And what tariff rates may apply if you live, if you're looking at a phone service? So all of that is, is data that if you don't know real time, you really can't confirm or deny that you can provide a service to the customer. So as orders were coming into our website, we found a tremendous fallout rate on the back end where we had human, it was swivel chair. So we had a human resource taking an order off the web and then going into our five different systems to see if the customer could qualify what they asked for. And a lot of times we were just kicking that back. So we had to call the customer anyways, which really degraded the perception that we were a digital provider, a technology company. So that piece was easy. I could, I could make that business case very simply on the hours reduced in terms of human resources re required to um, process those orders. Where the virtual agent came into play is as we were looking at this entire experience, you only get one shot in, in my company, in the consumer business, to do this and to do it for a five to 10 year window. I don't get to go through a website redesign every two years or every 18 months. So I had to make it count. And so there was this moment where the team really sat down and said if we have one shot to make it, then what is our wish list? What do we want to include to make sure that we're not just building a foundation to make it through next year, but that we're giving ourselves a little bit of runway? And when we looked at various options, the virtual agent really emerged as something that felt like it was worth the investment to give us that future platform. And it was easy to make a case for additional funds because the entire business case is predicated on a reduction in live resource hours, which are incredibly expensive to our company. Um, the first year cost was not substantial. It didn't take my budget and blow it up. It was a very nominal increase and um, it was very simple actually to prove out from a business case standpoint. Um, and now that it's there, the ongoing piece is, is very simple because it proves itself in its actual action. So it was a gamble, it was a risk, but I felt like this was our moment and if we didn't take it, then we were gonna be behind again and we <laughs> would not have really fulfilled our commitment to using the website to really redesign the, the brand perception and customer experience. All right. Well, on that cheery note, um, let's thank Sarah. This is a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.